Hi, and welcome to week nine. I am Sherry Levine, your financial accounting professor. As a reminder, we're in week nine, which means we're at our 75% mark. Congratulations for making it this far and know that I have a lot of confidence you will finish this course in just four weeks. This week, we will be learning more about long-term liabilities and the time value of money. Accounting for bonds payable is a main topic this week. You need to understand the time value of money to account for long-term liabilities. Long-term liabilities are those that have a maturity date beyond one year or operating cycle, whichever is longer, and include bonds payable, long-term notes payable, mortgages payable, and warranty payables. You will want to review FASB's Accounting Standard Codification Numbers 405 and 470. Of course, reading FASB's codification may be confusing, so if you're having trouble understanding the codification, I highly recommend the Wiley Gap book, which is in our O'Reilly playlist. All debt accrues interest, unless maybe you're borrowing from your sweet and generous grandmother. Depending on your accounting background, you may need to spend some time learning the time value of money concept. I have to admit that as a student, I didn't quite understand the time value of money at first. The concept isn't that challenging, but I had difficulty figuring out which formulas to use to solve the problems. The concept isn't that challenging but I had difficulty trying to figure out which formulas to use to solve the problems. I will post a time value of money PowerPoint presentation file in our classroom for those who need a refresher. The basic concept is that money, when invested, earns interest, which increases your investment over time. The other side of the transaction is that money, when borrowed, accrues interest, which increases your debt over time. Let's take a simple example of a $20,000 loan. Assume you borrowed $20,000 from a bank at 10% interest for five years to buy a car. You're interested in knowing the total amount you will be paying the bank, which will be the sum of the principal plus the interest. Note, interest accrues over time. So the day you borrow $20,000, you only owe $20,000. As each day passes, interest accrues and you owe more than $20,000. At the end of year one, $2,000 of interest has accrued and your total debt is $22,000. By the end of year five, $12,210 of interest has accrued and the total debt is $32,210. Thus, the borrower will have paid $12,210 in interest and the lender earned $12,200 in interest revenue. These two examples are classic time value of money questions. First, if I owed you $100, would you rather receive $100 today or $100 one year from today. Of course, you'd rather receive $100 today because I could die, I could declare bankruptcy, or I could be imprisoned, which would make it impossible for me to pay you $100 one year from today. Question two is the crux of the time value of money concept. First, if I owed you $100, would you rather receive $100 today or $110 one year from today? In this case, you would have to stop and think about it. If today's market rate of interest were 3%, then you would be wise to wait a year to receive $110. Because if you invested $100 today, it would only be worth $103 one year from today. Again, I will post my time value of money presentation slide deck in the class for those who need a refresher. Please check your syllabus and complete the deliverables for this week. As a reminder, graded quiz three is due at the end of this week. 
Thanks for listening. I look forward to seeing you in class. Bye-bye.